And I said, well, you know, it's a fella living next door to me. He has a GED. Mm -hmm. And good for him, good for him, good for him. But uh, it occurred to me that we both have an appointment with God. That's how they say it from the South. With God. Because they're serious. They're serious. And I said, well, you know, I got a PhD. Well, you know, it's appointed unto every man and die. And then come the judgment. I don't think the PhD going to get you through. But you can Google it if you want to. Man, I know what I need to do. I need to sin more. I need to sin more, but you don't just say it outright like that. You don't use the words. But you do say, I, I need to fulfill the void that I have inside. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do some time you know. I do some, I don't know, do some karate, some Pilates. Ain't that all got to do with the flesh? Again, I ain't no genius. But it seemed to me, I was still stuck on, I'm going to fulfill the lust of my flesh. You know why? Because I'm grown. I ain't got to tell nobody nothing. I'm grown. Well, you know, I imagine that it's going to be a whole lot of them grown folks standing before the master. <laughs> It's kind of hard for me not to acknowledge those who, you know, like my grandma I was telling you about earlier. Mm -hmm. It's in here. I know it's in here, but I, I try to suppress it. You know, I, I, I try to push it down because I want to be cool. I want everybody to like me. Don't you want everybody to like you? All right. I want everybody to like me. And them 3,000 friends I got, I want them <laughs> to like me too. But you know, the reality of it is, everybody ain't gonna never like right? you. And this is what my grandma would say. Listen here, boy. All them folk down at that school, they may or may not like you. And that ain't what you're going to that school for. You're going down to that school to learn. But there is one who loves you and died for you. He gave his life for you. Like goodness, Grandma, I just want a cookie. Now <laughs> <laughs> look at here. Ain't nothing but foolishness out here. Ain't nothing but foolishness out here. You hear me? I discovered that it was one's death was better than one's birth, and a good name was more precious than ornament. And a good name was more precious than gold and silver. It was here that God taught me a great lesson. I discovered something that most people never think about. It's better to go to a funeral than a wedding. It's better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. See, I discovered that at the house of mourning, the heart is made sorrowful. But at the house of feasting, there's this excitement and joy. See, at a funeral, the real story has been told. At a wedding, there's no story yet to tell. At a funeral, there was reality. At a wedding, it was a facade. At a funeral for the sadness of everyone's heart. But at a wedding, <laughs> everyone was excited and happy. At a funeral, was having fun. At a wedding, everybody was having fun. And at a wedding, <laughs> nobody really knew what they were getting. They thought they knew. <laughs> At a funeral, you saw the reality 
of God, the person, and the relationship. Lord, as I looked at these things, I became really confused. It's better to go to a funeral, the house of mourning, than to go to a wedding. Who knows the interpretation of all these things? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Oh God, help me. Help me to understand these interpretations. What a few. The heart is made sorrowful. The countenance is sad. And at a wedding, it is not. Lord, help me. Help me to know all these things. I was moved with my spirit and compassion. I was moved to know that we were all going to die. We were all going to face that great fate one day and stand before you, O oh Lord. When I saw the reality of the funeral, it made me begin to focus on you and to look at the true God and his purpose rather than looking at the facade of a wedding that sometimes was like a masquerade party. Because truly those folks didn't realize their sin would be exposed. I begin to say, Lord, if you don't want to have your sin exposed, don't marry. Because if you marry, surely your sin will be exposed. And everything about you, you will understand and know. Oh, Lord, my heart was troubled. I was trying to understand life in this chapter and the fulfillment of what you had called this great king to. But surely I'm the wisest man in Jerusalem. I should know these things, oh, Lord. Why isn't it that I don't understand the interpretation? Oh, Lord, these things are also vanity. These things are also causing me vexation of spirit. Vanity! Vanity! All is vanity. No. Oh, my goodness. Well, I don't feel like I used to. Guess I don't feel like sinning no more. When I first bought this cane, I had no intentions. I was going to use it for what it was meant for. Now things just don't look the same. It almost seems to me like my whole life has been worth nothing. Is there any place a man can hide that God can't find? Is there any sin a man can commit and God don't see it? Yeah, I got my skeletons in my closet. I got my scandals that I do. But mine ain't as bad as yours. <laughs> Somebody told me to make me feel <laughs> about me doing wrong. So, you know, I just keep thinking over and over. Man, what you doing? What you doing? You know, I, when I was young, I used to say all the time, I'm a grown man. I'm a grown man. That was like my favorite line. I have recently learned that when you were a real world man, All right. you ain't got to tell them. <laughs> so I said, well, maybe I'll start going back to the church house. That's a good thing to do. That should be always a good thing to do. Even though it's for the wrong reason. Maybe I might fool around 
up in there one Sunday morning. And you see. All right. But I ain't rich yet. <laughs> I'm a go though. <laughs> I heard you go home. What you doing? Baby, what you doing? I heard him say that it's a small, steady voice. Hmm. And he keeps saying to me, baby, what you doing? And I never answer. Because the truth is, I don't know what I'm doing. Ain't nothing but foolishness out here, man. Ain't nothing but foolishness. I went after so many things, I found myself swimming with the sharks. Materialism, which surely I thought was the answer. What if a man profit the whole world and yet loses his soul? What does he have? It seemed that nothing satisfied me, even with all the things that I had, all the wealth that I had, none of those things seemed to satisfy me. Not only materialism, but hedonism. I had a playboy philosophy. I had a playboy mentality. I had the attitude that I was going to satisfy my flesh with everything possible, and yet those things did not even satisfy me. I went from hedonism to humanism. Humanism, <laughs> that everything was about me. Oh, I had great wealth and riches. Matter of fact, one day the Queen of Sheba came to visit me from the continent of Africa. She said to me, oh Solomon, all of your splendid glory and half of the story has not even been told. She saw my great wealth, she saw my great navy with the peacocks and the elephants and the ivory and all the things that came. And she said half the story had only been told. And then I left from materialism and with the hedonism, the humanism, and now I'm going to fatalism. <laughs> with fatalism, I begin to realize that the wicked were going to die as well as the good we're going to die. How do the wicked die? How do the righteous die? So I begin to look at this and realize that one event was going to happen to both men. One event was going to transpire where both men would be in the grave. And then I saw the wise man, the guy with a PhD, post hole digger, <laughs> and the guy with a PED. And I was saying in the grave, who's going to be wise? I understood that the rich man, the poor man, was going to die, and both in the grave were going to die. And then I said, how dieth the wise man as a fool? And in the grave, then who would be wise? Oh, that began to bother me. It began to make me to question and understand all of these things under the sun as I was swimming with the sharks looking for life. Only again to come away dissatisfied with everything that life had to offer. Then I began to realize that one sinner destroys much good. For surely he pursues all of these things and only comes away with pain and anguish. Only to come away with his heart being turned away from God. Only to come away to know that all of these isms will never satisfy this man, this king, 